Now there are some very important questions which may have conditions like ax square plus bx plus c and they'll say ax square plus bx plus c is greater than zero for all x belongs to R. Now what I'm given is a quadratic expression and it says this quadratic expression is positive for all x belongs to R. So in this case, we are not supposed to solve the inequality, but we are supposed to find the condition with which we can say this quadratic expression is always positive. So we have studied previously that a quadratic expression is always positive when its leading coefficient is positive and d is less than zero. So any quadratic expression with the imaginary roots and a positive leading coefficient will always be positive. Now, second case can be ax square plus bx plus c. It is greater than or equal to zero for all x belongs to r. Now we have included an equality also. So for this, the condition will be again, a should be greater than zero and d should be less than or equal to zero. Now third case can be a quadratic expression ax square plus bx plus c is less than zero for all x belongs to r. So quadratic expression is always negative when a is less than zero and d is less than zero. And the fourth one is a quadratic expression ax square plus bx plus c is less than or equal to zero for all x belongs to r. So here condition will be a is less than zero and d is less than or equal to zero. So this we have done previously also. If a quadratic expression has imaginary roots, then it will either be always positive or it will be always negative depending on the sign of leading coefficient. If leading coefficient is positive, then it is always positive. And if leading coefficient is negative, then it is always negative. So there have been many questions on this concept. So I'll take up an example. If the inequality m minus 2 x square plus 8x plus m plus 4 is greater than 0, is satisfied for all x belongs to R, then find the least integral value of M. Find the least integral value of M. Now, what you see here is, I see a quadratic expression and it says this quadratic expression is positive for all real numbers. So a quadratic expression is always positive when A is greater than zero and when D is less than zero. So I need to solve these two conditions. So condition is m minus two should be greater than zero, which will give me value of m should be greater than two and d less than zero. So when I'll solve d less than zero, I'll get what? I'll get 64 minus four m minus two m plus four should be less than zero. So I'll divide by four, 16 minus m square plus 2m minus 8 is less than 0. So I'll take it on the right hand side. I'll get what? I'll get m square plus 2m minus 24 and it should be greater than 0. So if I'll factorize it, I'll get what? I'll get m plus 6 m minus 4 should be greater than 0. So this is what? Minus 6 and 4 plus minus and plus. So either the value of m is less than minus six or m is greater than plus four. So m is less than minus six and m is greater than plus four. Now, because it's an end condition, I'll need to take intersection of these two conditions. So what I'll do is, I'll take a number line and I'll plot both the solutions. So the first solution says, m is greater than two. Now the second one says, either m is less than minus six or m is greater than four. So the interval where both the conditions exist simultaneously is this value. So that means the condition I'll get is m belongs to four to infinite. So the least integral value of m for which this is true is five. Okay, I'll take another question. And the question is if lambda square plus lambda minus two x square plus lambda plus 2x 
is less than 1 for all x belongs to R, then find the interval in which lambda belongs. Lambda square plus lambda minus 2 x square plus lambda plus 2 x minus 1 is less than 0 for all x belongs to R. So this again is a quadratic expression is in x and this quadratic expression is always negative. So it is always negative for all x belongs to R. So now when is a quadratic expression always negative? A quadratic expression is always negative when a is less than 0 and d is less than 0. So when I say a is less than 0, lambda square plus lambda minus 2 should be less than 0. So I'll get what? I'll get lambda plus 2, lambda minus 1 less than 0. So the condition will be so this is minus 2 and 1, so plus, minus and plus, so I need minus. So value of lambda should lie between minus 2 and 1. So now when I write d less than 0, so I'll get lambda plus 2 whole square and then minus, minus, plus uh, 4. Lambda square plus lambda minus 2 should be less than 0. So I'll get 5 lambda square plus 8 lambda minus 4 less than 0. So 5 lambda square plus 10 lambda minus 2 lambda minus 4 is less than equal to 0. So I'll get what? I'll get 5 lambda minus 2 lambda plus 2 is less than 0. So the condition I'll get is, so the roots are minus 2 and 2 by 5. So this is plus, minus and plus. So I need what? I need minus. So from here the condition I'll get is, the value of x should lie between minus 2 and 2 by 5. Now because there's an end here, I need to take the intersection of these two conditions. So I'll take up a number line and I'll represent both the solutions. So this is between minus 2 and 1. So minus 2 and 1, both not included. And the second one is between minus 2 and 2 by 5. So answer to this question is lambda belongs to minus 2 to 2 by 5 and both not included.